A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Hello mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today I would like to talk about um, one of the most surprising mathematics facts I encountered in the last time and it has to do with a previous video I uh, did um, and it's actually a really trivial if I may say so myself but I never noticed but it came to me as a real surprise. This was a moment um, where I just thought okay this is pretty weird. Um, took me a second to get behind it but yeah um, and at the end I'm going to tell you about it another kind of trivial mathematics fact that I encountered during my theoretical physics courses which um, was kind of mind-blowing to me even though it has to do with the same thing basically and it's kind of trivial but yeah sometimes things that are trivial come as a real surprise to you um, I mean many people find many things so surprising mathematics for example some people think it's surprising that the harmonic series diverges even though we are adding up a smaller and smaller things other people think that um, all non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function have a real part of one half that this is kind of surprising but f f for me little things like the stuff we are going to talk about today um, are the most surprising things in mathematics. Um, yeah, now we are going to dive right in. So remember the video where I talked about a more superior quotient rule. So what we found out is that f divided by g prime is equal to f prime divided by g prime for a certain set of solutions. And one of these solutions I presented was that if we were to plug in g of x being equal to x, then we have a solution to this problem for f of x being equal to x divided by 1. Uh, divided by 1 minus x. And this is where I got stuck the first time around dealing with this problem because I thought that the result for the set of solutions I got was totally wrong because I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> and maybe this will come as a surprise to you too. So now we are going to plug everything in the solution and then we are going to see what we are going to get. I mean plugging x into here into the uh, left hand side is going to give us um, okay f is nothing other than x divided by 1 minus x and all of this divided by x and all of this prime. And you are going to notice that the x's are going to cancel out giving us okay the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x okay fair enough now what about the right hand side okay uh -huh. now now here comes the surprising part okay where where I thought that everything went wrong that I dis discovered that I derived now f prime is going to be just the derivative of um, x divided by 1 minus x okay and then we are going to divide all of this by g prime but g is nothing other than ah uh, x prime. The derivative of x is 1. Oh, okay. Okay, something by 1 is just something in itself. Meaning, what we are going to get overall is that the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is the same as the derivative of x over 1 minus x. And this is where I got seriously stuck because I thought to myself, no, this, this can't be right. Um, we know that that functions to have the same de derivative if they are either the same or if they are just shifted by a constant. But obviously um, we, we have an x up here. Those can be the same functions. No way. I mean <laughs> if you just look at this from the start you might think to yourself no I did something wrong in my derivation and I thought this too and I actually derived this whole thing three or four more times to see if I'm going to get the same result all the time. And, and then I thought about it a bit more and it actually became clear to me that yes, those two derivatives are actually equal. As surprising as that might be. And for this we are going to take a look at the geometric series at first because what we got here, okay, is just a geometric series and after that we are going to take a look at a more general result where this applies to and yeah you can actually show this without making use of the um, geometric series because for ge geometric series we need uh, the, the radius of convergence on x but if we were to plug in functions you don't always have this radius of convergence but it still holds. So, so at first let us write out what 1 over 1 minus x actually is. 1 over 1 minus x by the geometric series that's the sum from 0 to infinity of all the powers of x's starting from 0. So this is 1 plus x to the first power plus x squared plus dot dot dot. Now what about x over 1 minus x? I mean this is nothing other than x multiplied with the geometric series. 
Hmm. Okay, this is going to give us x times 1 plus x to the first power plus x squared plus da 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 up until infinity. Now, if we were to multiply everything in, we are going to get x, okay, to the first power plus, okay, this is going to give us x squared plus x to the third power plus da da da. And now it might become clear to you why those two actually have the same derivative. Because if we were to compare those two functions, you might notice that this part that we're having here is just what we have up here with a constant shifted by one. We, we have just a simple shift by one. And yeah, if we were to differentiate that, I mean the derivative of those two are actually going to be the same, obviously, since the limit goes to infinity of all of our powers of x's, but our one is going to vanish in the process, leaving us with actually just this function being this function shifted by one. And if you take the derivative, they are the same. Pretty cool, right? And pretty trivial, like mentioned before. But this was a real surprise to me. And I haven't encountered a mathematics fact in a while, which came to, to me as such a surprise. It's, it's kind of weird, but most trivial things give you the um, biggest <laughs> uh, deal for your money. Um, yeah, we can actually generalize this, like I mentioned before. Um, or x needs to be in the radius of convergence, okay, if we uh, convert this into a geometric series. But we can actually make this a bit easier. And this is a trick I have used in integrals before. Namely, what we are going to do is we are just going to add a zero on the numerator, okay? Meaning, if we have our one over one minus x, this is the same as, okay, what we can do is we can actually recover our denominator once again. What we are going to do is we are going to add a zero to the top, which is nothing but an x minus an x. So if I give you x apples and take the x apples away, you don't have any apples changing nothing on your equation at all. But what we are going to have is one minus x plus x, okay, just like proposed, divided by one minus x. And now since our numerator is additive, we can turn this into one minus x divided by one minus x plus x over 1 minus x. Hey, we know what this is. This is just what we have here. Now, this part at the front is nothing other than 1. And this is what we discovered before. Those two functions are basically is the same up to a shifting constant, which is cool, right? And yeah, you can go through this procedure in a more abstract way. Namely, it doesn't need to be a 1 here. It also doesn't need to be an x. We can just take a look at, okay, let's say we have um, f divided by, okay, and other than that, I, I mean, if we were to compare, we got the one and the one here, which is our f, and we're going to subtract the g from it. And this right here is actually the same as g divided by f minus g. You can just go through the whole procedure once again, because this right here is nothing but f minus g plus g divided by f minus g. We can break this up, giving us, okay, and we also don't want to forget one right here, so we, we got a shifting constant. And then we are going to get this f minus g divided by f minus g, okay, plus g divided by f minus g. And obviously those two are the same because this right here is going to the a to one. Pretty sneaky, right? And yeah, this is a nice generalization. It really doesn't matter which f and g are going to plug into here. I mean, you can plug the Riemann's theta function into here as our f and the Dirichlet eta function as our g into here. And yeah, then you are going to see that the der derivatives of those two functions right here are actually the same. Pretty cool. As long as our um, zeros down here are not um, zero. Okay, we, we don't want that. We don't want our uh, denominator to explode. Now there's another very surprising fact that I encountered during my theoretical physics courses at university. And those are namely functions of the form natural log of a times x, okay? Given some kind of weird potential, okay, you want to do a Legendre transformation and all this crazy stuff in Hamiltonian mechanics. And yeah, this was actually something we got on our exam. For example, we, we got a certain potential which had such a logarithm term. And you can actually make your life easier because what you're going to notice is that the derivative of logarithm a times x is nothing other than the derivative of the logarithm of x. And this was such a huge surprise to me when I was younger, okay? This didn't make any sense to me 
at first glance because there's an A in here, but there's not, but they both have the same derivative. You can make your life way easier if you notice this. And this just has to do with a shift in constant yet again. Even though it doesn't look like it at first because you have this A right here, you can go through the whole um, yeah, through the whole um, chain rule stuff and wh whatever, but you don't even have to do this because we know that the logarithm of A times X is nothing but the logarithm of A plus the logarithm of X. And yeah, obviously, if you now were to take the derivative on both terms, logarithm of A is just a constant, it's going to cancel out, leaving us with the derivative of the logarithm of X. And once again, this also applies if you have instead of an X, some random arbitrary function F of X here. So the logarithm of A times F of X, and the derivative of this is the same as the logarithm of f of x differentiated. Yeah, and this is just something I want to let you guys know, had to do with a previous video. And yeah, maybe you learned something new today. Namely, <laughs> your intuition could be wrong from time to time. And the uh, simplest and most trivial facts could be a real surprise to you. And if you want to be surprised a tiny little bit more by cool mathematics facts, etc., cool tricks that you could learn, then I encourage you to try out today's sponsor Brilliant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. I remember back in the days when my chalkboard didn't magically try to go upwards by itself. Um, but even this time around, Print was already a sponsor of this channel. And I'm very glad they are because I really enjoy the stuff on their website to a huge extent. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> this blackboard is it's so weird. Never mind. Brain is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, like we did today, physics, whatever you wanna take a look at Hamiltonian mechanics, Lagrangian mechanics, general relativity, special relativity, they got you covered. And all the other stuff that you could think of, technology branches like computer sciences, learning how to do Python, you can all do all of this over on Brilliant and they are going to provide you with one of the best interactive learning experiences out there on the internet. One of the things that I find most remarkable over on their website is their course concept in, in general because it's just so highly interactive and they really encourage you to work with your hands a bit more. Namely, what they want you to do is they want you to take a look at, at crafts interactively, dragging stuff around, taking a look into crafts. For example, one of the best visualizations for Riemann integrals is to split those up into infinitely small rectangles. And on the website, you can do exactly that. You can drag, leave it around, and then you can make the partitions smaller and smaller, giving you a way better intuition for why integrals work the way they do. And that's not the only instance where you can drag stuff around. You can do so all the time, especially on their geometry chapters, which are so good looking. I really love the animations there and all the graphics and it's just very nice to work through all of the courses. And if you want to try it out, if you think that that could be a perfect fit for you, maybe you want to get stronger in some certain STEM discipline over the course of Corona where you can go to school anyways, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription if you really really use the link. But if you only click on the link and want to take a first glance at Brilliant and their amazing website, then yeah, you can do so. Take a look at the link and you can access a big portion of print already for free. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and comment, channel, like, blah, blah, blah. Other than that, we got cool merch over on STEM merch, okay, like those engineering clocks or math puns. No, you can't get my 100K block right here. And other than that, I think that's watching. Have a day. Ciao.